Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Eran Baydemir. I'm a product manager at the Amazon Redshift team, and I'm delighted to be here with Anusha today in this session. Hey, Anusha. And hello, everyone. I'm Anusha. I'm a Redshift Specialist Solution Architect. Today, Erin and I are going to discuss how Redshift is going to help you get faster insights from data by integrating seamlessly with other services. Then I will show a demo on how some of these integrations work. So Erin, can you start us off by telling why having these seamless integrations with other services is important? Sure, sure. So uh, as companies grow, they need purpose-built, use-case-specific analytics solutions. And integrating these solutions can be difficult and time-consuming, especially when you're dealing with large amounts of data. And our customers, they want to spend less time on these integrations and focus on their data analytics. And having seamless integrations helps a lot to avoid the headache of dealing with complicated uh, pipelines, saving you time and money. Yeah, spending less time on integrations so that they can focus more on business yep. outcomes. That sounds amazing. Now, please tell our viewers a little bit more about the integrations that Redshift offers. Absolutely. So one of the things that we care the most about in Redshift is enabling data analytics on all your data. So based on your use case, uh, Sometimes you need to seamlessly transfer data into Redshift, but sometimes you prefer to access data on its source. And, uh, or maybe just utilizing other services uh, to do some external data uh, processing. So basically, well, we offer a comprehensive range of integrations to help you build the right solutions and using the right set of building blocks. Yeah, comprehensive integrations are great. Let's talk more about them. Please shed some light on how some of these integrations may work. Some examples would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start with the most common procedure that you would need to do before running your data analytics on Redshift, which is getting your data into Redshift. And this can be a challenging task because you would need to ingest from different types of data sources. And in many cases, you would need to do it continuously and without too much delays. Right. So as a result, we see that many customers are spending a lot of time on setting up those manual data ingestion pipelines. So lately, we had uh, a couple of announcements on this area to address uh, some of these uh, problems, like streaming ingestion support. If, if you're using streaming engines like Kinesis Data Streams or Managed Streams for Apache Kafka, previously, what you could do was to create a staging environment on Amazon S3, uh, store your streaming data first, and then ingest it into Redshift from Amazon, Amazon S3. Uh, and now with the streaming ingestion, we are eliminating this step and you can directly stream, stream in data into Redshift. And similarly, our customers are asking to make it easier to continuously and incrementally transfer data from Amazon S3 without implementing their custom built solutions to maintain these pipelines. So in the latest event, we have announced the preview for the autocopy copy support from Amazon S3. So as a user, you don't need to worry about manually ingesting files continuously because Redshift can now detect these files once they land on S3 and automatically load them into Redshift while preventing data replication as well. And one of the most exciting topics which we frequently talk about nowadays is the Amazon Aurora Zero ETL integration with Redshift. So a very common pattern we see with our customers is using Aurora as their operational database and then using Redshift at the heart of their analytics system. So typically you would need to build and maintain a complex ETL pipeline to continuously ingest operational data from multiple databases into Redshift. And now you will be able to use this new integration to eliminate this manual process and easily replicate your data from Aurora to Redshift. So this will help you to focus on what you really want to do, which is data analytics, and get near real-time an uh, analytics on petabytes of transactional data. Nice. It's always good to see that we are constantly announcing easier ways to get data into Redshift. 
But Erin, sometimes customers want to access data without moving it to Redshift or consume Redshift data without exporting yeah. it out of Redshift. Can you also talk a little bit about that? You're definitely right. I mean, moving data into Redshift is not the entire story. And there are tons of other use cases that require Redshift access from other services as well. Uh, some of these services help uh, customers to extend data analytics on Redshift with data coming from third parties. Uh, for example, discovering and sharing data at scale is not an easy task. And Amazon Data Zone, which is recently launched, uh, it helps to solve this issue. Uh, it acts as an entry point for analytics on shared data sets. Uh, it also provides built-in governance too. So you can use Redshift to run your queries on data sets shared through Data Zone. But sometimes you need to enable collaboration on data between companies or organizations as well. And uh, you would want to do it without sharing or revealing the underlying data. So with AWS Clean Rooms, you can create a secure clean room in minutes and collaborate with another company to generate insights. And then you can use Redshift again to run queries on the data uh, pushed into S3 from AWS Clean Rooms. Mm -hmm. And our customers, they have also realized the potential of linking their data with data provided by third parties, uh, data vendors or public data sources. So we needed to bridge the gap between these data providers and the subscribers by offering a way to easily exchange data, help them innovate faster. And uh, so with the AWS data exchange, you can easily access live and ready to use tables through Redshift without worrying about data recency. And finally, we also provide integrations to consume Redshift data outside of Redshift. Like many customers run Spark workloads on Redshift data today, and they have been asking for an easy to use and high performance integration with Apache Spark. So with our Apache Spark integration, you can now easily access Redshift data from services like Amazon EMR, AWS Glue, uh, or Amazon SageMaker, right? And speaking of SageMaker, uh, I think we should also mention Redshift ML, uh, because as you know, machine learning is one of the most disruptive technologies of our time. And people often think that utilizing AI and ML on your data is very complicated, right? Uh, so we believe that it's not only about offering all these integrations. So providing the best user experience for each customer is also very important. So that's why we built Redshift ML to integrate Redshift with SageMaker so that you can simply run SQL queries to automatically train and deploy machine learning models inside Redshift. So once your model is ready, uh, you can run predict predictions on your data just by invoking some SQL functions. Uh, but yeah, I think this is enough talking and because there's a lot more to say about these integrations, but Anusha, why don't we just see these integrations in action? Thanks, Erin. I will now demonstrate some of the integrations that Erin mentioned. I'll be using an e-commerce company's analytics application as an example. It has three different data sources that produce data in different formats. First is a payment gateway that produces streaming JSON data by processing credit card payments. Second is an OLTP database on Aurora MySQL that is the back end of their website. It holds transactional data such as customer accounts, product catalogs, orders, etc. And third are web logs and they have valuable information to measure website's performance. The objective of this analytics application are multifold. First is to ingest data from these three sources in near real time in order to get faster insights. Second is to combine this data, transform it, and make it available for reporting. Third is to use machine learning to detect if any of the payments coming from the payment gateway are fraudulent. And last, to visualize the transformed data using dashboards. The architecture I'm showing here achieves these objectives. For data ingestion, we are going to use three easy to use integrations provided by Redshift to ingest data. These integrations are indicated by numbers one, two, three, which are streaming ingestion, zero ETL integration, and auto copy from S3 respectively. 
The ingested data is then combined and transformed using AWS Glue. Glue has a simple, easy to use Visual ETL interface to develop jobs. Then Redshift ML is used to create machine learning models by integrating with Amazon SageMaker to detect fraudulent transactions. Finally, all this transformed data is visualized using Amazon QuickSight. Let's see the demo in action. We'll start with ingestion and I'll show you the demo in the order of numbers that you see on this slide. First, we'll see how streaming data can be loaded into Redshift from Amazon Kinesis using streaming ingestion. Data from payment gateway is getting loaded into the customer payment transaction stream info. To create a data pipeline from the stream into Redshift, I'll go to Query Editor V2. I'm connected to Data Insights Day Workgroup. First, I'll create an external schema pointing to Kinesis. I can also use MSK here. To materialize data from the stream into Redshift, I'll create a materialized view called Customer Payment Transaction Stream. Notice that to access the stream, I just used a dot notation, external schema dot the stream name. Because we have set the auto refresh to yes, Redshift will automatically take care of refreshing this view with new data. I'll go ahead and create this materialized view. And with just these two steps, we have set up a near real-time ingestion pipeline from Kinesis to Redshift. In order to check the progress of this pipeline, just count the number of records from the materialized view and see how fresh the data is. To do that, just run this query. You get the count of records and the freshness is 8 seconds. Because the data is continuously ingested, when I hit run again, this count will be increased. I'm going to hit run again. And you can see the count is increased, indicating that data is automatically getting loaded. In order to view the data in this materialized view, just select from the materialized view and you can see the data that is getting loaded. That was streaming ingestion. Next, let's see how data from Aurora MySQL backend database can be continuously replicated using zero ETL integration. To create zero ETL integration, go to RDS, click on this button, give your integration a name, choose your source MySQL database, Choose your destination Redshift namespace either within the same account or a different account and click Create Zero ETL Integration. The integration is in creating state. The integration is now active. Go back to Redshift Serverless. In order to view the integrations, select from SVV Integration. Select the integration ID. I'll go ahead and run this. The database is now created. Expand the Data Insights Day Word Group, and you can see the zero ETL database. And within that, we are interested in the customer product schema. You can see that in the schema, there are two tables, customer and product. Let's go ahead and view the data. First, change the database to the new database that we just created, and select from the product table. Get a count of the product table, there are 100 rows. Let's go to MySQL and get the count of product table. You can see that there are 100 rows in MySQL database as well. Go back to Query Editor V2 and select from the product table where product ID is 100. You can see that there is no record. I'll go back to MySQL and insert a record with product ID 100 with a description of speaker. One row got inserted. I'll go back to Query Editor V2 and now look for Product ID 100 again. You can see that the row got inserted, but hey, the description field has a spelling mistake. Let's go ahead and fix it. Now I'll issue an update statement to change the description for the Product ID 100. One row got updated. Go back and Query Product ID 100 you can see that the update is reflected. The third ingestion demo is to ingest data from S3 into Redshift in near real time using auto copy from S3. Using this feature, as in when new files get created in S3, they're loaded into Redshift automatically. Let's see a demo. 
data from web logs is getting loaded into the web log data folder with a partition structure of year, month, day, and hour. To load these files into Redshift when they are created, we will use something called a copy job. Let's go back to Query Editor V2. The log data will be loaded into a table called web log data. As you can see, this table is empty. To start loading data into this table, we'll create a copy job. Copy job is a construct created on top of the familiar copy statement. For the copy statement, you would just append this line said job create and give it a job name and say auto on to automatically load data from this S3 location provided. We'll go ahead and create the copy job. With just these two steps, we have created an automatic data pipeline from this S3 location into the web log data table. As we speak, data from this location is automatically getting loaded into the web log data table in near real time. Let's check the status of the copy job. We will query the load history table for the copy job ID. We'll go ahead and run this query. You can see that 1779 files got loaded and you can also see the number of rows loaded. When I click on run again, you will see the source file count increase and the number of loaded rows increase. I'll go ahead and click on run. As you can see, the file count increased and the loaded rows increased. That is the demo on all three ingestion pipelines we have. Next, let's look at how we can transform this data using AWS Glue and how easy it is to develop ETL pipelines using Glue Visual ETL. To create a glue job, go to Glue Studio, select the visual with blank canvas and click Create. Give this job a name. Use Redshift Source. We want to join two tables, so click the Redshift Source twice. So to add a join transform, just click on the transform. You can see that the join got added. We want to transform some string fields into timestamps. So I'm adding the two timestamp transformation. And eventually I want to load the data into Redshift table. So I'll choose my target as Amazon Redshift. As you can see, as I'm clicking each of these transforms, the ETL is automatically generated. Now I'll click on this node. Through this ETL job, I want to join the streaming data from Payment Gateway and transactional data from MySQL database. So for the first source, I'll name it Payment. I'll go to the data source properties. Choose the Redshift connection, choose the schema, and choose the materialized view that we've created, which is customer payment transaction stream. I'll go to the next source. I'll name it. And for customer, I am going to use the customer product connection. In the customer product connection, I'll be choosing the customer product schema and choose the table customer. Next step is to perform the join. The source for the join are both customer table and the payment table. And I'll add a join condition to say customer.customer .customer ID, uh, payment.customerid. Next, I'll convert a string to timestamp. The string that I want to convert is transaction date time. And eventually, I want to load this data into Redshift target. I want to load it into the public schema into a table named customer order payment. I would like to append data into this table. You also have the ability to perform merge or truncate and load or drop and recreate if you choose to do so. With this, your ETL job is ready. You go to the job details and choose an IAM role for execution. Go ahead and click save. The job is now saved. Go ahead and click run. And the job execution starts. Once the job is complete, you can see data populated in the target table. Now I go to query editor V2, select from the customer order payments table to see if the data exists. And you can see that the data is populated from the glue job run. Next, let's see how you can detect 
fraudulent payment transactions using Redshift's integration with SageMaker, which is Redshift ML. Now we are going to create a machine learning model in order to detect if the incoming payment transactions from the payment gateway are fraudulent or not. For that, we are going to use historical data that is available in S3. I've already created a table and loaded it from the data that is in S3. Let's see the date range in that table. Redshift ML allows you to use familiar SQL skill sets to create, train, and deploy models. To create a model, we'll pass a SQL statement as an input to the create model statement. The select statement contains the features that can be passed as inputs to the model. It also has the value that is to be predicted and it supplies the training data to the model. For this create model statement, the field that is being predicted is transaction underscore fraud. Once the model is created, a Redshift SQL function is generated and its name is going to be ease customer payment fraud, which will take these fields as input and produces the output indicating whether a transaction is fraud or not. This automatically discovers and tunes the best model based on the training data using SageMaker Autopilot. If you choose to determine the problem type and perform hyperparameter tuning yourself, you can do that as well. I've pre-created this model. In order to see the details of the model, you can use the show model statement. You can see that Redshift ML automatically determined that this is a binary classification problem and it shows the objective to be F1 score. Now let's perform some predictions using this model. Running predictions is also simple SQL statements. Select statement, which uses ease customer payment fraud function, passes the inputs that are required, and produces an output which predicts fraud. I'll go ahead and run this. And you can see the fraud prediction values in here. That is predictive analytics using SageMaker. Finally, let's look at visualization using Amazon QuickSight. To access Redshift through QuickSight, first go to Datasets, create a new dataset, choose Redshift, enter source name, server, port, database name, username, password, and click Validate. Once the collection is validated, click Create Data Source. Choose the schema you want to select. Within that, choose the table that you want to visualize and click Select. You can choose to import the data set or query directly, and then click Visualize, and then click Create Analysis. I have pre-created an analysis to get number of signups per year, total revenue, transaction amount by product code, to find the most selling products, and some other nice visuals. I then published into a dashboard. To look at the dashboard, go to Dashboards, and view the dashboard I just created. This is how you visualize data easily using Amazon QuickSight and Redshift integration. With that, we have seen all the components of the demo and how they come together. You can also use this alternative architecture to ingest data into different Redshift endpoints and perform data sharing between them. For ETL, you can use our partner tools like Informatica and DBT. You can publish or subscribe to datasets using AWS Data Exchange. You can also access Stripe data through data sharing. Wow, that was so impressive. Uh, thank you, Anusha, for showing us that demo. Uh, and we hope everyone found this session very helpful. So we're at the end of our session. Uh, to our audience, uh, thank you for your interest in learning. And for those who want to dive deep, uh, we have an O'Reilly book coming out later this year. This is a very comprehensive guide. And we have the first five chapters already out, which you can get from this QR code here. And for those who want to spin up Redshift serverless, we still have the $300 in credit that uh, lets you try it for free. And we have many more resources on our site. So thank you and enjoy the rest of AWS Data Insights Day. <music>